Hi there traders, this is Brad Gilbert with the FX Market Insight for the 25th of July. All right, now we come into trading uh, for Wednesday and the start of the Asian session looks pretty good. We've got the, uh, the four correlating pairs, the Aussie, uh, Kiwi, Sterling and Euro, pretty much in full correlation. Okay, I know Euro is sort of just lagging there a bit, but uh, the shape of these currency pairs is very similar. Now they are trading a little bit sideways at the moment, but uh, they are all primed to move pretty much at the same time. If we get a, if something key out of the US happens uh, or something else along the way. Now, dollar yen, we had that sort of initial move after, um, after the weekend. It's now sort of trading sideways. Uh, same for uh, dollar CAD. Now, the basic technical setup is, is, is quite exciting. It's the first time in a while that we've had the markets or the US dollar correlating against sort of all the pairs in uniform, so that makes it easy to pick them off, right? All we need to do is follow the the economic data from here. And if I just come across and give you a look at the uh, US dollar, all right. So and even have a look at the dollar here. Um, you know, it's it's got very similar to shape to uh, euro and a few of the currencies. It is trading sideways. We have support and resistance both sides. Overall, to me, it's still going up. And then we've got uh, dollar China which has steadied as well. And this is pr pretty much where the other majors are, are sort of sitting back and waiting for something to happen. I think the heat is off that one devaluation sort of scenario that Trump's been throwing up. It, uh, it does look like it's stabilised. If anything, there's potential levels for it to, to appreciate, which would see the US dollar fall against it. And that may be an opportunity to get into a trade there. Now with the, uh, just have a quick look at the, uh, the major news sort of floating around the place um, is not a hell of a lot because up until now, this week has been uh, pretty light on with data, but it changes today. Euro pairs gains from PMI data. We had some German PMI data, which was strong. Euro went up about 20 odd points. Then the Eurozone PMI data was somewhat weak. It sort of basically led to a sideways trading market. Um, sterling, everyone's still sort of watching Sterling. Sterling has managed to climb itself off the floor. But Brexit's still hanging over that um, uh, at that at the moment, and then you got the uh, the CAD story with uh, the CAD edgy or oil sort of back to sixty eight seventy five, which is sort of pushing um, dollar CAD a little bit uh, higher as oil sort of falls. All right, so this sets us up quite nicely though. As I said, we've got uh, pretty good conditions, uh, trading conditions at the moment, and if I just bring up the uh, the MyFX Trading Hub. Now, all we have to do is follow the trail, follow the data, follow the markets, right? We've got good technical markets. As I said, the, um, the trading conditions are pretty good, clear correlating markets. And the market is, has got so disassociated with Trump at the moment and those, the whole you know, trade tariff story, it's all gone quiet. So what we've got a situation now is prime trading times where we've got good correlating markets and now we're leading into the start of the the good economic data for the week. Sort of reminds me of the, the current Tour de France, you know, where they go through a couple of stages where there's a few sprints, few little hills. Now we've got the, the Alps, we've got clear conditions for the, uh, for the mountain climbers, and this is where things are gonna really take off. So today in the Asian session, you gotta focus on the Aussie and the Aussie crosses, right? It, it's prime. This is a, a quarterly number, so it has bigger impact than the monthly numbers that you, we get month in, month out. And then as we go through um, into uh, Thursday, then we'll come into the ECB. But right now for the moment, you want to be focusing very closely on the Aussie and the Aussie crosses, as I said. This is where the action is going to be now. With the, um, if I just come back to the majors and have a, have a close look at the Aussie dollar, you know, it has been sort of teetering sort of sideways, if anything. Uh, let me just come across here. You can see there's, there's been a bit of a sideways or a bit of a, a top here. You got one, sort of two, almost three tops here. So we've got a bit of resistance around 74.32, but just be aware, 74.40, it has managed to top out the currency uh, three or four times there. So if you, anything, if you're looking for a strong CPI number, we're probably looking to get long above, well, initially you say above 30, but if it breaks above 74.40, we should see a, a nice move to the top side. And this is where, what we've been missing the last, you know, probably a few months on a lot of the numbers is the economic number connecting with the technical side of things. Now, the Aussie short term it has been sort of clawing its way up off the floor. 
we're coming back up. Momentum is currently to the top side. We are seeing dollar China sort of stabilizing, if not drifting lower. And that supports a strong number to the top side. So with the numbers though, let's just have a quick look at what we, what we need here, okay? Because this is the focal point for the, the Asian market. We're looking for numbers that are, well, obviously variant to the numbers that are forecast. Now there's a couple of different numbers here. Now traditionally, okay, we had this the CPI quarter on quarter numbers. These are the main ones. Now the RBA over the last sort of year or two have started to introduce their own numbers. Okay, a weighted medium and a trim mean. I mean, it's, it's a bit convoluted for my liking, but ideally you're watching this top number and that's what the market will react to. Uh, keep an eye on the, on the RBA numbers as well though. If anything, we want them all to be lined up. So we want something stronger than 0.5 across the board, Aussie will shoot up. If it's less than 0.5, say, you know, 0.3, well, then Aussie will, should get belted, you know, 50 to 70 points lower at least, all right? It's gagging for these economic numbers. And then as we come into that um, European session, now, just, just be aware, there's, there's no major numbers. And I don't have these on our um, upcoming events on the MyFX Trading Hub, but the IFO numbers, right, these are traditional, really high-impacting numbers, uh, the IFO business climate numbers out of Germany. Uh, as you saw yesterday, the German PMI numbers did really move the market euro about 25, 30 points. So keep an eye on these um, numbers as we go through that European session. It, it is probably the next or the second level of uh, good trading opportunity as far as getting something with momentum moving. And then as we come through the uh, North American session, there's nothing really to write home about, which is a real shame, as I said, because we've got really good clear correlating markets. It's the prime time to get some good US numbers. Um, if anything, new home sales, check out that, uh, keep an eye on that if you're in that uh, North American session. I know you'll be gagging for, some, uh, for something to get some momentum around. Have a look at that number. That's probably the, the, the best of the, of the numbers at the moment. And then we come into uh, Thursday, which is gonna be really primed around. Euro is gonna be hugely active with the ECB um, meeting. Okay, so that's pretty much it for today. So once again, just focusing very closely on the um, Aussie CPI numbers today. This is a really high impacting event. As I said, it's a quarterly number, has much higher impact than the month on month numbers. We've got clear correlating markets. You really wanna tune into your Aussie chart and your Aussie crosses. This is where the action is gonna be all day. All right, and that's pretty much it guys. Have a good trading day. We'll see you in the trade zone. All the very best.